Not only did I write a lot over the hiatus, I read a lot too. Ten books to be precise. So today I'm going to try and pack in all ten of those book reviews in as little time as possible. First up is Arusha and the End of Time by Roshini Chakshi. If you love Rick Riordan books and you would really like to see something like that but with Hindu mythology, then this is the book for you. Middle grade books tend to be a hard sell for me. I enjoy some of them but they're pretty few and far between. This is one of them. Arusha definitely gets five stars from me. Number two is Save the Date by Morgan Matson. Morgan is one of my favorite YA contemporary romance writers and this book book definitely did not disappoint. It is full of family drama and everything going wrong and all the craziness of a wedding weekend and there's a really cute dog. It's one of those stories that makes me wish I had a really big family with lots of siblings. Another five star read. Number three, Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. This book was not quite what I was expecting based on the pitch of Wonder Woman meets the Vikings. I thought it was going to be a little more fast-paced than it was and although I thought there were a few weaknesses in the writing. Overall it was a solid well-written book with very interesting characters. I especially loved the main character and since it's a debut novel I can't wait to see what Adrienne Young writes in the future and see how she grows and develops as a writer. I give Sky in the Deep a solid four stars. Next up is Winner Take All by Lori DeVore. This is a book about a flawed teenage girl and the toxicity of over competitiveness and perfectionism and the obsession that can come with first love and how that can be a problem and it was just wonderful and amazing and I love that slightly toxic relationship that's going on there but like at the same time you also want to cheer for them and you want it to work out for them. Definitely a five-star book for me. I don't think it will be for everyone because some people will probably say that the main character is unlikable but I loved it. Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. I listened to this as an audiobook. I definitely enjoyed it in that format. I think it would also be great to be read as a physical book. I can't think of a single problem I noticed in the writing. Justina's prose is fantastic. I loved the the characters, especially a couple of the side characters, and this whole idea of an alternate history post-Civil War. Personally, I took like half a star off because I'm just not that crazy about zombies and I wish it had been something other than that, but still four and a half stars, still a wonderful alternate history zombie book. Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This was another audiobook I listened to. I love Maureen Johnson. I really like mysteries. I enjoyed this book. I think part of the problem with Truly Devious for me is that it's being spread out into three books. So in this book I didn't feel like there were enough answers for either of the mysteries that are presented and the answers that were there were kind of unsatisfactory. There were multiple plots and subplots and I would have liked for at least one of them to have a sense of closure and it didn't really seem like any of them did. So this is like four stars for me. I'll probably read the next one just to see what happens and find out some more answers. I think I'm on number seven which is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I really enjoyed this book but I think that's a hundred percent because it was the exact type of book that I was in the mood for. At that specific moment in time I happened to be in a very strong mood for a fantasy with a romance at its center which is what An Enchantment of Ravens is. It is a fairy book and it's mostly about the romance between the main character who's a human and this fairy and it's forbidden love and all of that. It was actually another audiobook I listened to and it was a fast read and it definitely scratched that itch I had for a fantasy romance. So I'm just gonna give it four and a half stars because I don't think it's a perfect book but it definitely was what I wanted at the moment. Next up, Huntress by Melinda Lowe. I've been meaning to read one of her books for a long time so I'm glad I finally got around to it. I didn't quite care about the conflict in the characters as much as I wanted to. I could tell that the stakes were there and I knew what they were and they were important but they just didn't feel as dire to me as I think they should have. But I thought the writing was gorgeous and I enjoyed the romance and the story and the journey the characters 
characters went on and I'd love to see more based in this world. I'll definitely give this book four stars. Number nine, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, which is probably my favorite book on this list. Cruel fairies and a power-hungry human girl who grew up among them, who is not afraid to spill blood to get what she wants. I loved the world and the characters and the very messed up romance and the plot and the structure of it was very solid and I cannot wait for January 2019 to find out what happens next. Five stars, seven stars, all the stars for The Cruel Prince. And last but not least, Blood Water Paint by Joy McCullough. I started this list with a middle grade, which is not one of my favorite categories, and I'm ending with a novel in verse, which is also not one of my favorite genres. But Bloodwater Paint is so good and I don't think it could have been written in any other way other than in verse form. It is powerful and beautifully written and just knocks you in the gut and in the feels. It is historical fiction and poetry and feminism all at its best a definite five-star read. It's gorgeous. Please go out and read it. Anyway, those are the 10 books that I read over hiatus. It was a lot. A lot of audiobooks, a lot of reading. It was all great. I enjoyed all of it. As you can tell, none of it was under four stars. Let me know in the comments what books you have been reading lately, what you have enjoyed, and I will see you guys this Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time for our live chat.